Dr. Jonathan Schimmel. I'm an emergency physician and medical toxicologist at the Mount Sinai Hospital. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about fever and the use of ibuprofen for fever and specifically for COVID-19. So before we speak about the use of ibuprofen for COVID-19, let's talk about fever in general and what is a fever. So fever is the body's response to an infection. This actually wastes a lot of precious energy by the body. And so why are we actually doing this to generate a fever? Um, the thought is that a fever is actually beneficial to our body in many ways. And our brain actually increases the temperature set point that it directs the rest of the body to be at when we have an infection. Physicians generally consider a fever to be a temperature of 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or greater, with a few exceptions. And so that's what a fever is. There's a lot of anxiety surrounding fevers as the number itself. Now, as physicians, what we care much more about is what's causing the underlying infection as far as the type of virus, the type of bacteria or fungus, et cetera. And then what are the body's other effects from that infection? But the actual number itself, the fever that we're talking about, is potentially a beneficial response by the body to fight off the infection. So before we get into COVID-19, let's talk very briefly about some of the research that's been done in the past on fevers in general and the use of a fever reducing medicine, which is called an antipyretic drug. The two main types of antipyretic drugs are acetaminophen, which has a brand name of Tylenol and in much of the world is called paracetamol, or ibuprofen, which has a brand name of Motrin or Advil, Another one is naproxen, which has a brand name of Olive in the United States. So these are all antipyretic medicines that reduce fevers. So some of the past research that's been done looking at uh, the potential benefits of fevers and the use of antipyretic or fever-reducing drugs um, includes evolutionary studies um, and several others. So evolutionarily, the fever response by the body is actually conserved across a huge number of species, including in cold-blooded animals that will actually move into the sun to help increase their body temperature uh, when they have an infection. And so the thought is, well, if our body is wasting its precious energy, and this has been conserved um, by evolution across so many types of species, this fever response, that there must be some use of the fever response for the immune response to the infection. There have been several studies trying to have animals with infections at a higher temperature or a lower temperature or giving them fever reducing medicines. And the studies generally show, although they're mixed, they generally show that the fever response can actually be helpful to fighting an infection. There have also been some human studies looking at fevers and whether they're beneficial. These uh, human studies have been published in prestigious journals, and, and there are enough of them that there are actually larger studies called meta-analyses and review articles that gather all this research together to look at it. At the end of the day, what these studies tend to show is that Fevers may be beneficial for humans to fight off infections. That taking fever reducing medicines may potentially harm the body's ability to fight off an infection. However, at the end of the day, a lot of these studies do not show a big effect from it in either direction, whether benefit or harm. And so at the end of the day, it probably does not make an enormous difference. So that's speaking a little bit about fevers in general. Now let's get into um, the concern about ibuprofen and COVID-19. So where does this concern actually come from? Things are moving rapidly when it comes to COVID-19 and research that's being published. So on March 11th, which is just eight days ago, a letter was published in the Lancet Respiratory Medicine 
And this letter was merely suggesting the possibility that ibuprofen could potentially make COVID-19 worse. The letter actually was focusing on blood pressure and diabetes medicines, and there was a sentence that mentioned ibuprofen. So after this letter, France's health minister um, announced that people should really have a lot of caution in taking ibuprofen for COVID-19. Although there was no actual data, um, this was just suggested in a letter based on some hypothetical mechanisms. And then the World Health Organization tweeted out that they said, based on currently available information, the World Health Organization does not recommend um, really ibuprofen. Then subsequently, they um, tweeted that they were consulting with physicians, they are not aware of any evidence, and that they do not recommend against ibuprofen at this time. So everything is kind of rapidly changing at this point. What are the hypothetical concerns? Just to dig into the science for a moment. Um, COVID-19, one of the ways that it attacks the body is when it enters the lungs, it binds a molecule on our cells called ACE2. There is some suggestion that ibuprofen may increase the level of ACE2. And theoretically, if that happens, then could there be more of this molecule on our cells for the virus to bind to? That's the theoretical concern. As of right now, there is no actual human or animal data to suggest that's true for COVID-19 and the use of ibuprofen. So that gets us into our next question. When is a fever reducer appropriate for treating the symptoms of COVID-19? At the end of the day, probably if you're if you are suspected to potentially have COVID-19 and you are uncomfortable from a fever, it is probably okay to take a fever reducing medicine. If you feel like you can ride out the fever, so to speak, then it's reasonable to skip taking the fever reducing medicine. So which fever reducing medicine, if you are going to take one, is best for COVID-19? Well, this um, whole discussion really surrounds the use of ibuprofen and NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. This discussion does not concern acetaminophen, which is known as paracetamol or Tylenol. And in fact, the French health minister suggested that people take um, acetaminophen instead of ibuprofen. So which fever reducing medicine is best for COVID-19? We really don't know at this point. Probably either one is okay, um, but if you're gonna take one, it's reasonable to potentially lean more towards acetaminophen instead of ibuprofen. Now, who should avoid taking ibuprofen? Well, anybody with a known allergy to medicines should avoid taking that medicine. That's true for any medicine. And then people should speak with their doctor before taking ibuprofen if they have any diagnosis of kidney disease, inflammatory bowel disease, if they have a history of stomach surgery, or if they're on any blood thinning medicines. So what are really the take home points here? The primary reason to treat a fever with a fever reducing medicine is to reduce discomfort. The actual fever number itself does not concern us so much. And there is some evidence that fevers are actually beneficial for the body to help fight off an infection. So do not feel like if you have a fever that you automatically need to take a fever reducing medicine. The real indication to take one of these medicines is if you're feeling uncomfortable. And if you are feeling uncomfortable from a fever, is whether there is harm or not, we really don't have good evidence. There probably is not a large either benefit or harm. So if you are feeling really uncomfortable from a fever, it's probably reasonable to take one of these medicines. Does it matter whether you take ibuprofen, naproxen, acetaminophen? It probably does not make a big difference. But if you have acetaminophen, it's reasonable to lean more towards acetaminophen at this point until we have more data. 
Um, if you have any questions, please speak with your physician. And I hope that everyone out there um, does well with this. And if you're feeling sick, I hope that you feel better.